and welcome back. I see you survived the first film, but will you make it past the lock and shock of two smoking scandals? Tonight's episode is brought to you in part by Crazy Bill's Used Car Rodeo. You've got to be crazy to sell cars for this cheap. Oh, there's a knock at the door. I wonder who that could be. Oh my gosh, it's Von Dillenhaven! Oh, you dropped your letters. Hold on, I'll get it. Don't worry, I'll get it. Two letters? Are these both for me? Oh my gosh, what a treat! Thank you very much, Mondo! Alright, take care! Oh, our first letter is from Sally Mansfield. Sally writes, Dear Luther, I'm a big fan of your show, but some of the movies you show are a little too violent for me. Is there any way you could warn me about how much blood and guts will be in each movie? Thanks. Love, Sally. Do we have a, a picture of Sally we can pull up? Oh, we do. Okay, let's see that. Well, Sally, you're in luck. I have just a friend here who can help you out. So join me as we take a trip to Gorzo's Fungin! Well hey there Luther, and hey there Sally. I heard that you're not a big fan of gross bloody horror movies, and that's okay. I know a lot of people who don't like blood, like my baby doll here. My baby doll loves scary movies, but she cries if the movie gets a little too bloody. Kinda like you, Sally. Let's see what happens when I tell her what movie we're showing tonight, and see how she reacts. Uh-oh. Sorry, Sally, but it looks like this movie might be a little too bloody for you to watch tonight. Thank you, Gorzo. I'm sure Sally found that very helpful. <laughs> oh no, my baby doll's bleeding. Alright, thank you, Gorzo. Uh, Gorzo, ladies and gentlemen. Alright, our next letter is... <laughs> Anthrax! Anthrax? There's an emergency in the laboratory and a serious risk of contamination. Have the emergency squad sent here right away. Repeat. Serious risk of contamination. Close all safety doors. Only the emergency squad is to enter the laboratory. Notify Professor Adams and Professor Vince at once. Apply all measures of maximum security.
Hi folks. We here at Mid Fright Snack want you to know that we love animals with all of our hearts and would hate to show you anything that may be confused as the glorification of violence towards animals in any way, shape, or form. In the scene you just saw, we witnessed a group of rats really letting each other have it. Now, we can neither confirm or deny that these animals were harmed during the filming of this scene, but what we can do is add music behind the scene to help lighten the mood. Alright, that didn't help all that much, but I assure you our intentions were good. To help better explain how much we care about animals, we've asked some of our cast and crew to participate in Bring Your Pet to Work Day to show just how much we care. This is my cat, Stevie. In the cat world, she is what's known as a domestic medium hair cat. But what she is uncommonly known for is being a 300-year-old witch named Gavelda, trapped in the body of a five-pound kitten. Gavelda was widely known throughout Europe as Kinderfresser, or the Child Eater, after cooking and devouring nearly 90 children in her homeland. She narrowly escaped execution by turning herself into a tiny little house cat. She now lives out her days trapped inside the body of this sweet little baby, determined to one day return to her original form and have revenge on the ones who have wronged her. She also loves to play with her mousy toy and hates to have her belly rubbed. Say hi, Stevie. Oh. Wow, Luther, Stevie seems like a great cat. Thank you, Gorzo. And who did you bring in today? This little guy? His name is Porkchop. He's a rescue from a factory that does testing on animals. Sadly, we weren't able to get there in time before the tests, so he needs round-the-clock supervision. I'm sorry to hear that, Gorzo. That must be hard to juggle with such a demanding job. You know, Luther, it was a lot of work. That's why in the end we decided to, uh, graft him onto the end of my arm. I guess you can say, uh, ever since then we've been inseparable. <laughs> I don't really know what I was expecting with that one. President of Chemical, I would say, yes, this report seems to be sufficient. The Ministry will accept our version of the affair. And we don't have to say anything about the risk of contamination. There's no point in causing alarm. That's impossible, Mr. Milton. Don't forget the people in Newton suspect something. Yes, that's very true. And I would say they are definitely against the kind of experiment we're performing. They won't find out about it. After all, it was accidental. But inexplicable, at least for now. Isn't it, Vince? Oh, yes. Jane, I think we'll make more progress in our research programs if you'll please leave this whole affair to me. If Professor Adams agrees, it's all right by us. I'm glad to hear it. The problem is simply Professor Adams. <laughs> Hi, Betty. Hi, Lucas. I nearly didn't get here. 
You've been to your sister's? Yeah, that's right. You coming for a... No, I can't. I've got to be back at six. Oh, just a short ride. You promise? Sure. All right. Don't forget. We found the girl's body. It's in dreadful shape. It's over there. I'll show you. Just look. I never would have thought a human being could do such a thing. really horrible. I can't think what kind of weapon the killer used on her. But the way she's cut up, it could have been a meat axe. Doctor, I want the results of the autopsy tonight. Right. This is our case. And I want this killer in jail before those London head shrinkers start excusing him. So get going. these things that created all the mess, huh? There are some things that even science cannot understand. It takes time for the mind to accept them as possible. I see. 
Do you mind if I call you Jane? I'd mind if you didn't. Fine. Uh, what can you tell me about this Professor Adams? You fellows think that people aren't interesting until they disappear. Hmm. You don't have to disappear. So, according to your story, the professor is off struggling with the trout. After biology, trout fishing is his biggest passion. Mm. Wait in the car while I look around. the best way to treat a lady. I told you to stay in the car, Lady Jane. It's dangerous not to follow orders. <laughs> I think we'd better let some light in. Hmm? Well, it looks like his things are all here. No, not everything. His old military jacket isn't there. You're observant. He always puts it on when he's fishing. I think I'll just take a look around. Recognize him? It's Henry Miles. He was guarding the professor. Yes, I used to know him. Come on. You've been marvelous today, boys. Now you can go. But first, I have something for you. One for you, one for you, 
one for you and Thank say hello you. to Granny for me. And be a good boy. See you tomorrow. And don't forget to study. I won't. All right, boys. Time to go home. Your mummies and daddies are waiting for you. They're expecting you back for dinner. And wash your grubby little hands before you eat, eh? I say, boys, haven't you forgotten something? Come and get it. Easy does it. And remember, don't stop to play along the way. This substance we found on Henry Miles' body has a completely anomalous cell structure. That isn't the point, Jane. In my opinion, there's a connection between the murders, the accident in the laboratory, and the disappearance of Professor Adams. Perhaps, but you have to prove it. Look, Jane, you have to cooperate with me if we're going to find out the truth. And that's more important than the good name of your dear Professor Adams. Mr. Milton wants to see you. All right. You wanted to see me, sir? Yes, come in. Captain Kirk, Sergeant O'Brien. How do you do? I've been told the whole story, Captain. I hope I can be of help. Not alone, are you? I'm sorry, but I only have two men under me. And they're busy chasing a homicidal maniac. And you can't be of much help, Thank you, can you, Sergeant, for taking the suggestion I gave you. We must avoid a panic. And above all else, we mustn't attract journalists looking for sensational news. Yes, but I think the people should be warned. Yes, but perhaps later on. And, Captain, remember the overriding necessity that the Plurima plan remain a matter of utmost secrecy. Come in. I didn't know you were busy. No, no, not at all. How are you, Captain? Fine, thanks. Ah, Sergeant O'Brien. How do you do? The computer report is finished. But perhaps it's better if I come back later. No, no, you can speak freely. I don't want these gentlemen to think we have anything to hide. All right. We had the computer set up to analyze all the information available concerning Professor Adams' experiments with the new vaccine. And as expected, the reply was insufficient data. Insufficient? If you would like, you can check it yourself. <laughs> if you gentlemen would excuse me, come along, Professor. Dreadful actors. Don't you agree? What do you mean? All right. What if there is a connection between the accident in the laboratory, the disappearance suddenly of the professor, and the killings? Sergeant, before we find it, we have to find the professor. Things are really heating up here. Crazy Bill, used car. behind the wheel of a car. Put a gun to your head? Ah! I won't die. If anybody says they can beat all prices, I will beat them. I will literally beat them to death. Boy, you know, I wish I had visitation rights to my kids. <laughs> Crazy Bill's used car rodeo. Never, I'm sorry, please come home. As you can see, the area is quite large. We'd need volunteers for a manhunt, but then we'd have to offer an explanation. And that could easily cause panic if it got to the general public. Yeah, and that's not the only problem. We haven't got much time. Why not, Captain? When we find Adams, you'll see, okay? Hello? Oh, it's you, honey. What a pleasant surprise. Oh, no, I never go to bed this early. I was just going to have a nice shower. You didn't phone me last night, Ducky. Is that how you're feeling? I am, if you are. But don't you keep me waiting. Put your skates on. See ya.
now have the problem of quarantining the town's entire population. But, Colonel, have you read my report? This situation is serious. Naturally, naturally. Have you learned anything about the virus and Professor Adams? The professor's disappeared, but the virus hasn't. Colonel, the virus is deadly. That's the main reason I phoned you. Any other information? Colonel, do you realize that this will be the first time you've used Plan Q? What do you mean, Captain? You know exactly what I mean, sir. Don't worry. And calm down. The authorities have assured me that it won't be necessary. Yes, but what if they're wrong? What if the virus spreads? This whole town could become a cemetery. Now, Captain, you're exaggerating. And be careful of starting a panic, too. I want you to remember that you're the only person who can really handle the situation. I'm no Superman, Colonel. Oh, this is no time for modesty. You have to eliminate the source of the contagion because it endangers the whole world. No one is to enter or leave the town. And you may use your gun if necessary. It's been authorized. You may use your gun if necessary. Do you understand, Captain? Yes, sir. I got it. Hello. and the line went dead. gives me the creeps. Sure does. You really think this is where we'll find Professor Adams? If he's still alive. Let's look in there. Be careful. It might collapse. That way. You know, why not? 
<laughs> All right. Uh, I, are you sure you want to do this today? I mean, we can reschedule it. <laughs> no, it's it's cool. I mean, hey, we're here. Why not? Let's just do it. <laughs> All right. Um, so I guess you're like a mouse chef or something. All right. Uh, what'd you make? Oh, it's cheese. All right. Look at that. All right. Uh, let's take a bite and uh, see how it is. <laughs> Are you sure you really want to go to a movie? If I'm not mistaken, it was your idea. Yeah, but we could... Come uh... on, Paul. Okay. the rest you have to earn it. Now what do you want? One of those huge ice cream cones from the jumbo bar. But it's too far away. It'll take me ages. Don't be silly. It's just down the street. And it's worth it because I'm going to thank you in a special way. Hmm. You promise?
What's going on, Sergeant? Why has the town been cut off? What is it? The phones and the TV don't work either. What's it all about, Sergeant? Calm down and stop worrying. For the moment, there's no information. Let me through. No, sir, you're not going anywhere until you've told us everything you know. Go back to your houses. This is an emergency. I'm unable to give out information. You're not fobbing me off with dumb excuses. Just a moment, please. <coughs> you can't shoot all of us. Let's not make this business worse than it is. Sergeant, for goodness sake, tell us what's happening. Yeah, we've got a right to know what's going Let on. Let him speak, not you. You're not giving him a chance to get a word out. Sergeant, please. Excuse me. What's the use? Can't you see? Sorry. They do whatever they feel like. I feel well, this. Go on like no this. use losing our tempers. They'll tell us sooner or later. Just be patient. Will you please all be patient? Anyway, let's not hang around here in case that thing comes back. I have very important information for the minister, but it's impossible that you can't get in touch. No, listen. Say it concerns the Plurima plan. Yes. I'll stay here. Please have him call me. Thanks. You home, Daddy? Uh. <laughs> Hi. How are you doing, kids? Did you have a good time? Oh, yes, it was super. <laughs> really super? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what? Everybody says there's some kind of maniac running around. Uh -huh. Yes, it's everybody true. says oh. so. <laughs> All right, girls, go and get ready for dinner. All right. Off you go. Good night. Night. Night, night. night. <clears throat> Did you have a talk with the minister? No, not yet. Do you think there's really any danger? I doubt it, dear. Only I'd be a lot happier if you'd take the children up to London. And you? Oh, I'd love to go. Only I have to remain here till they find that fellow Adams. Smith, call Army Headquarters. Yes, Sergeant. Now prepare for the worst. I think they've cut the line. Oh, Lord. What's happening to us? 
Everybody's going crazy. No, the state of emergency isn't my worry. I'm sorry. I want to get my family right out of Newton. No, I said no. I'm not interested. Then get the authorization from the Prime Minister, from the Queen, from anybody you like, it doesn't matter. But if you refuse, I shall get in touch with the press and see that everyone learns exactly what's happening in this town. Because you wanted these dangerous experiments. Got that? Hello. 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 James. James!
Intermission, intermission. Intermission, intermission.
What is it this time? Another victim? I've explained everything along the way, Captain. We're in a dreadful mess. People are going around with weapons. If the soldiers try to stop them, they'll start shooting. Look, Captain, the army undoubtedly has a radio. You could call your superiors and ask them to lift the roadblock. Waste of time. Sergeant, there they are. I hope we can keep it from getting out of hand. Hey, Sergeant. Yeah? What's up? Turn back! Turn back! There's a military roadblock! Nobody goes through! Position. Step on it now. It's just an army exercise. There's no change. So go back home. Plug in the megaphone. Yes, sir. Your attention, please. Your attention, please. This is Colonel Rutledge of the Army Information Service speaking. For reasons of national security. This town is in quarantine for a period not exceeding 20 days. I repeat, this town is in quarantine for a period not exceeding 20 days. Attention, please. Attention, please. If anyone attempts to force the roadblock, we will be obliged to open fire. We ask for your cooperation in avoiding violence. These measures are for your own safety. Please remain calm. I repeat, these measures are for your own safety. Please remain calm. Give him a warning flare, will you? There's something going on in There's nothing to worry about. All right. You let us out of here, you. Go on back. Get back in your car. Stop trying to think. We have a right to. We have a right to get out of here. We have a right to. Okay. We have a Have it your own way. Go ahead. Aim ten yards ahead of them. Right, Sergeant. Fire straight at them. that fella nothing serious let's go right
What is it? What have you come back for? They wouldn't let us through at the roadblock. You'll just have to stay. They call it a cleaning up operation, which means that they wipe out every living thing. Humans, animals, everything. I can't believe it. In military logic, it's the one sure way of getting rid of the virus. For them, it's mathematical. Better to kill a thousand people today than a million later. Isn't there a way we can stop this? If we can convince them that we have an antidote, within five hours. This is all top secret. Of course, Captain. Don't forget it. tension of that substance found on the victim's bodies, we can halt the spread of the virus. Then you found the antidote? In theory, yes. What does that mean? 
We have to wait for the guinea pig's reaction in three or four hours. As far as we know, isn't Adams the only carrier of the virus? Yes, since all his victims are dead. So, if we eliminate him, that stops all danger of contagion, right? I suppose it must. I'm sorry for him. But we'll have to kill him. Let's go. So long. Come on. What do you want? Uh, I ain't done nothing. I ain't done nothing. Uh, go on home, sleep it off. That's you, Sergeant. How are you doing? Care for a quick one or are you on duty? Go on, run along. Yeah. Sergeant O'Brien. Sergeant O'Brien. You bought it the Milton Hall. How oh, beautiful. <laughs> yes, this is O'Brien. Yes, Sergeant. I'll be right there. Something's happened to the Miltons. Let's go. Right. would like to see you downstairs. Okay. Here. Have you found anything? Not much. He must have got out this way. My men didn't see him leave the house, and there are traces of blood and that green substance. Milton fired a shotgun at him. Two barrels of hunting shot. What will it take to stop him? A missile? What are you doing? I want to follow him. I forbid you to. It's crazy. And you don't know how to kill him anyway. I know I don't, but I have no choice. Come on. for a drink, mate?
Got you? Yes, sure did. You're wounded? No. Uh, the monster's bleeding. Lucky I came looking for you. <laughs> O'Brien, I owe you a beer. <laughs> and now, trimming the fat with your host, Trimming. Ah, oh, hello. And hola. Tonight, we'll be dining on the film Panic. A film as layered as a seven-layered bean dip. Let's take it from the top. Panic is far from the cream of the crop. In fact, it'll leave a sour taste in your mouth. And boy, is it cheesy. Holy guacamole! What's on that dude's face? You'd think, surely this must be a precursor to the scientist turning into a big green monster, right? Wrong! Talk about salsa roja! And make it chunky! Now, let us not forget how redundant this plot is. It's as refried as these beans here. I mean, come on! How many movies do we need where some scientist turns himself into a giant monster? Yuck! Are those olives? Whose idea was it to put olives on these things? Seems a little out of left field, don't you think? Kinda like this priest subplot. Who the hell is this guy? And why the hell should I care? And why is he creepily giving candy to children? Is this supposed to be endearing? Far from it! Despite Panic's best attempts at being zesty and flavorful, it's best to ditch the dip and stick with the chip. Yeah! This has been Trimming the Fat with Trimming. Look at this. The abandoned factory. That woman's house, the cinema, and the Milton's. Now we know how he gets from one part of the city to another. Yes, you see, Captain, this area of town is riddled with tunnels that connect with the sewer system. They're part of an ancient Roman drainage scheme. That's what they say, anyway. Well, whatever they were, how many exits are there from these tunnels? There are ways out all around the city. Evening, Captain. Evening, Ross. Fly pen for you. Control tower to Kangaroo 297. Engage manual control systems. Proceed, Ross. Yes, sir. All set, Captain. Kangaroo 297, request permission to approach. Control tower to Kangaroo 297. You may enter approach to runway. How's the cargo? Loading has been completed, Captain. Okay, give it the gas. Ready, Captain. We finished sealing up the exit, Sergeant. There's no way he can get out of here now. We can be sure of that. Hmm. Now we have to flush him. The problem is the method. There's fire, of course. No. Just a minute. If we fill the tunnels with some kind of gas, chemical must have one. Chemical? Yeah. We should have thought of them before. They can provide the best solution. No doubt about it. 
Come on with me. You too. It worked with a guinea pig. Now we can cure Professor Adam. Oh, no, Jane. Use your head. It's impossible. We can't even get close to him in the condition he's in. I'll do it. You'll do nothing of the kind. Listen to me before you say anything. I found the antidote and I'm sure it'll work. It only took an hour to act on the guinea pig. For a man, it should only take three or four hours. You really care about Professor Adams, don't you? My interest is for the whole human race. But we haven't enough time. Why not? Because in one and a half hours, we'll all be dead. Kangaroo 297 to Control Tower. Any final instructions for our mission? Control Tower to Kangaroo 297. You are authorized for takeoff. The captain may now open his sealed orders. Wind is calm northwest, temperature 15 degrees. There's something wrong, Captain. Uh, no, nothing. The usual orders. Let's move. A nerve gas bomb. Why, that's just awful. Do you think the public opinion will accept it? They know what they're doing. It's sabotage that will pass as an accident. And there won't be very many witnesses in a tomb. It's atrocious, inhuman. It's the logic of power. Don't forget that. Professor, take me to the strong room. I need two units of Necron. But it's impossible that you people know about it. No. No way. I must refuse to oblige unless you force me. Please, Kirk. I know I can still save him if I go with you. Not a hope. You're not coming. Stay here. over the objective, Captain. Do these tunnels lead to the sewers? Yes. Here, give me that. The old drainage network empties directly into the sewer system. I know it by heart. And so does Professor Adams. We're both members of the Civic Works Commission. Right, you two, go that way. You come along with me. Yes, sir. Come on.
Question, Captain. Go ahead. Why have you stayed here with us? You could have got away easily. <laughs> Adam stinks. Like this place. I want to see him dead. Sergeant O'Brien. Have you found anything over there? No, nothing so far. Well, keep in contact. I'll keep the switch open. That'd be okay? Come on. <coughs> it's all 
almost impossible to breathe, Captain. Yeah, you're right. But we've got to go on. Give me the radio. Yeah. O'Brien. What is it, Captain? Have you found anything? No, we haven't seen a thing. But Brown can't go on. We have to find him. We've only got half an hour. These fumes are going to poison us. <coughs> Look, Sergeant, we can't stop now. Don't worry, I'm with you. Brown, you'd better get out of here before you collapse. I'll go on. Professor? Professor? Look out! It's broken. I'll go on ahead, okay? You call Brian, right? No, Captain. I want to be in on my kill with you. <coughs> Hello. Kirk! Captain! Sergeant O'Brien, come in. I'm not reading you. Come in, please. Can anyone hear me? Professor Adam. Oh. Professor. I know you're here, Professor. Come up, please, so I can see you. <laughs> Jane, your assistant, don't you recognize me now? Trust me, Professor. to help you. Believe me, I don't want to hurt you. There are men who want to kill you, Professor. I can help you. Understand me, don't you? Mm. 
a few minutes to notify London. Kangaroo 297 here. Come in. This is Kangaroo 297. Please answer. Please answer. I might have known it. Prepare to abandon the aircraft. Abandon it? We're abandoning the plane. Those are orders. What about the cargo? Shut up, will you? And make sure we leave her on automatic.
think you may have gotten a piece of my mail by accident. Oh, oh, oh my god, you mean to tell me? Well, how do you like that? <laughs> you know, this kind of thing always happens to me. This was totally my fault. You know what it was? I bet I put the wrong, yep, right there. I put the wrong zip code. Oh, um, yep, right there, there it is. <laughs> yeah. Wow, so this is your anthrax then? Anthrax? No, 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 no. This was not anthrax. This was, uh, hang on a second. What's that? Uh-huh. Yes, sir. Package is secured. Yep. Sending over the coordinates now for the cleanup crew. Uh-huh. Over now. Well, <laughs> I guess that's about everything. Sorry again for the mix-up. Hey, you're only human. <laughs> you got that right. Well, we'll have this all cleaned up very soon. <laughs> oh, well, thank you. I appreciate that. Terrific. Take care. <laughs> well, how do you like that? It was just a big misunderstanding. And he was nice enough to send in a cleanup crew. <laughs> a real class act. Well, that seems to be all the time we have. As always, I'm your horror host, Luther Andros, wishing you a...